Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today, I am presenting the book House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. Now, I want you to guess how long it took me to get this book from the library. I was on a waiting list for how many months, do you think? If you guessed six months, you are correct. Yes, this book is so desired among the entire community that it has taken me six months to get it. And the reason why I'm really surprised by it is that this was published last year, April 2021, and it's still incredibly popular. So this is a YA book. It's kind of how it's described is that it's a dark, twisty, contemporary fairy tale where three sisters discover they are not exactly all they seem and evil things really do go bump in the night. So I'm actually going to talk about the summary first to entice you. And then I'm going to talk about Crystal Sutherland and kind of all the stuff she's accomplished. And then we will go into my thoughts about the book and a little extra information to entice you even further because this is actually quite a great book and there is a reason why it has taken me so long to get it. Here is what the summary is. Iris Hollow and her two older sisters are unquestionably strange. Ever since they disappeared on a suburban street in Scotland as children, only to return a month later with no memory of what happened to them, odd, eerie occurrences seem to follow in their wake. And they are changing. First, their dark hair turned white. Then, their blue eyes slowly turned black. They have insatiable appetites, yet never gain any weight. People find them disturbingly intoxicating, unbearably beautiful, and inexplicably dangerous. But now, 10 years later, 17-year-old Iris Hollow is doing all she can to fit in and graduate high school on time, something her two famously glamorous, globe-trotting older sisters, Gray and Vivi, never managed to do. But when Grey goes missing without a trace, leaving behind bizarre clues as to what might have happened, Iris and Vivi are left to trace her last few days. They aren't the only ones looking for her, though. As they brush against the supernatural, they realize that the story they've told about their past is unraveling, and the world that returned them seemingly unharmed ten years ago might just be calling them home. Yes, that's the summary. It sounds really intriguing, right? Let's talk about Crystal Sutherland because I believe her being the author of this book is actually one of the larger contributors as to why it took me so long to get it. She's an internationally published author. She originally hails from Australia, but now she lives in London. And I actually thought she was from London because the book, because it's in Scotland. The book is placed in Scotland and everything about it was so accurate. And there was like street names and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, oh, she must be from London. Nope, Australian. But the biggest part about her career is that she wrote this book called Chemical Hearts. And that did so well that there was a film adaptation produced by Amazon Studios and it starred Lily Reinhardt, who was in Riverdale, and Austin Abrams, who is in the very famous show Euphoria. This was her first novel, so uh, that's pretty impressive. And that was in 2016. She did another novel called A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares, and that was published in 2017. So this House of Hollow is the next awesome book on her list that she wrote in 2021. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of show or movie adaptation because it is really good. Before I continue on my thoughts about this book and kind of a little extra information for you, I want to issue a trigger warning. There are a lot of dark themes in this book. There is abandonment, suicide, gore, 
nightmarish scenarios. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. So if that is something that bothers you, I wouldn't necessarily go forward. But if you want to continue on, I will not be issuing any spoilers. I'm not going to run my mouth this time, I promise. So I want to talk about the sisters first. So we have three very different personality types. We have Grey, she's the older sister, and she is idolized by both Vivi and Iris, like entirely idolized. Now, Gray, she does seem dark. She actually does tell Iris that she is the danger in the dark that you want to watch out for. And the reason why this is important is that all of the sisters have this ability to attract people. It's like, you know, Gray and Vivi are able to actually utilize it and manipulate it, whereas Iris never really mastered that and she didn't really want to. Gray is a master manipulator. So what she's done is she's kind of leaned into being more attractive, enigmatic, and just being, you know, this crazy, mysterious superstar. She is a literal celebrity. So everyone knows about Gray. She's got this weird allure about her and just everybody fawns over her. Now, on the other hand, we have Vivi. So Vivi decided to do the polar opposite because they don't necessarily have to go out of their way to attract people. People will just come to them. So Gray just kind of used it and amplified it, whereas Vivi was like, I don't want that attention at all. So what she's done is she's got piercings, tattoos, all kinds of stuff. She's in like this metal punk band and plays the bass and she's just really like harsh Yeah, she's kind of an overall badass. Then we have Iris, adorable little Iris, who's a huge nerd. I'm trying to recall. My memory is really bad. I think she's either trying to go into coding or physics or, you know, she's just hyper nerding it up. And she just wants to finish school and be done and have a normal life. Together, the sisters have a very, very powerful bond to the point you almost feel like they're magically bound to each other. There are plenty of descriptions in the book that talk about how Iris can actually feel Grey breathing or how Grey's breath is actually Iris's breath. They can feel, you know, it's just, they're very connected to each other. And that is how it's always been throughout the entirety of their school life until the two older sisters went off and moved out, whereas Iris stayed home. And I like what Crystal Sutherland did with that because I feel like it's kind of a glimpse into something where you might say on the outside, oh, how sweet it is that you have such a powerful relationship with each other, this sister bonding thing. But I think it actually is really toxic. It is very codependent. And this isn't a knock on the book. I genuinely think that Crystal Sutherland was trying to portray that hyperconnectivity. And that's something that was really unique to the sisters. On the other hand, we have the mother, whose name is Kate. And Kate would rather the sisters refer to her as Kate ever since the accident. She does not like being called mom by any of the children. So there was this big incident that happened to the sisters. They don't really know what happened. The world knows what happens, kind of. But they come back, but they don't know where they went. They just disappeared. It's this big mystery and... That's one part of the story. The story takes place around the anniversary of their kidnapping. Another part of the story is that we have their father, Gabe. They kind of refer back to their father, Gabe, a couple times. He, over time, was slowly going insane. He kept insisting that all of, that basically his daughters were not his daughters, and he ended up taking his life. And it was very heartbreaking. We have Vivi and Iris who were incredibly upset about it. This event is obviously pivotal and it kind of pushes Gray and Vivi to move out from their mother's house. 
Whereas Iris decides to stay, even though she's still in high school, but she could have probably lived with her sisters. She ends up staying with Kate. And even though Kate is, uh, she does not like Grey, she does not have a relationship with Grey. Uh, she has barely a relationship with Vivi, and she's hyper protective over Iris. You know, there's a very unique dynamic going on. That's a big part of the story is just the family dynamics. So now we have this story. Vivi has a show that she wants her sisters to come see. She's performing in town. So understandably, Iris wants to go see. Kate is like, well, okay. She's letting Iris go. And usually Grey will come along, too, because, you know, she's famous, too, and she's a celebrity, so of course she probably has the means to do that. Iris and Vivi end up getting together, and over the course of the night, Grey never shows up. And this is what starts the story off, is Grey never doesn't show up. Grey is always on her phone. She's, you know, a celebrity. She's on social media all the time. She would definitely reply back. This prompts them to start looking for Gray. And then they meet up with Gray's boyfriend, whose name is Tyler, and they all partner up. And then they are all trying to discover what's going on with Gray. And then the story starts to unravel even further, presenting more of those puzzle pieces because this particular event is almost parallel to some of the things that happened to them when they were younger, but they just don't remember what's going on. Which draws me to the reason why I love this story so much. This isn't a very unique story, necessarily. Girls go missing. In fact, I think in April 2021, we reviewed at least five books with almost identical sisters going missing stories, right? But the prose and the narrative and the imagery in this book is absolutely gorgeous. So it's not a slow build to these gruesome descriptions and world building. It We just start there. It starts very, very dark. We basically take a plunge in the deep end versus having that build up. And it gets more and more grim as we go on. So I want to read a few passages in the book just to kind of give you the idea of what I'm talking about. Hollow's creations are beautiful and decadent and strange, but it's the clandestine nature of her pieces that have made them so famous so quickly. There are secret messages hand-stitched into the lining of each of her gowns, but that's not all. Celebrities have reported finding scraps of rolled-up paper sewn into the boning of their bodices, or shards of engraved animal bone affixed alongside precious gems, or runic symbols painted in invisible ink, or minuscule vials of perfume that crack like glow sticks when the wearer moves, releasing Hollow's heaty eponymous scent. The imagery that features in her embroidery is alien, sometimes disturbingly so. Think gene-spliced flowers and skeletal minotaurs, their faces stripped of flesh, much like their creator. Each piece is a puzzle box, begging to be solved. Another quote, and this is only like 24 pages in. I'd held it close to my nose and inhaled, expecting a sweet scent like gardenia, but the stench of raw meat and garbage had made me dry heave. I'd left the flies and fetid bloom in my mother's drawer and slammed her bedroom door shut behind me. The weirdness that lurked in old, empty houses and the wildwood thickets of ancient heaths found it hard to permeate the monotony of uniforms and fluorescent lighting. It had become my sanctuary away from the baseline strangeness of my life, even if I didn't belong here with the children of some of London's richest families. It's just beautiful it's just beautiful the the prose is is stunning and i really love it we get a lot of parallels between life and death beauty and the grotesque and how everything is bound together and how everything interacts and what you should truly watch out for 
Another quote in this book that it was really quite powerful is, Why are you so beautiful, do you think? So hungry. So able to bend the wills of those around you. You are like the death flowers that grow rampant in your wake. Lovely to look at, intoxicating even. But get too close and you will soon learn that there is something rank beneath. That's what beauty often is in nature. A warning. A disguise. Do you understand? So she's considering things like poison dart frogs. They're beautiful. And then, you know, you can die of their toxins. They can kill a thousand humans. And how extreme beauty, usually in nature, actually does mean danger. Extreme beauty means death. And I really love the parallels that they're drawing here. It's just a beautifully done book. If you're looking for a really grisly tale, a contemporary fantasy that is most definitely dark, I highly suggest House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. It is a beautifully written story with graphic scenes. And oftentimes I felt like all of my senses were flaring up. I did have a few times where I even felt my stomach going into knots because I could actually taste or smell or see what was being described. And I don't usually have that reaction. I have to be honest. I I have a fairly strong stomach for this stuff. So check it out. And let us know what you think, or if you already have checked out this book, we'd love to hear from you on Instagram, Facebook, we have YouTube, and Amazon Live. Leave us a comment. Uh, I will be posting this episode like I do all my episodes on all of those platforms, so pop in. Not only that, make sure to spread the word. Tell your friends about Dark Side of the Library, especially if they like creepy tales freaky reads, and they're just an overall weird person like me or you because you're here too. Make sure to check out our website at darksideofthelibrary.com for all of our show notes. We list all of the books that we talk about, and that includes affiliate links. Anytime you make a purchase, we get a few cents. Thanks, Amazon. But that doesn't affect you or your price or anything like that. It's just a great way to help the podcast keep going. And for those of you that have done this already, thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening to this mini-sode about House of Hollow and Crystal Sutherland. I hope to see you next time. Have a creep-tastic week.